Welcome to this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. On today's program, we're going to spend some time with Suffolk Parks and Recreation and find out what they have coming up as far as outdoor activities for the spring and summer. And we're also going to highlight the protege mentoring program that Suffolk Parks and Recreation helps coordinate. Some great opportunities for you to get involved here in the city of Suffolk. Stay tuned. Welcome back to On the Scene. We're joined now by Suzette Vita, who's an outdoor recreation specialist with the City of Suffolk Parks and Recreation Department. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Sure. Well, one thing, you know, I know it's it's a little cold, a little wintry out there right now, mm -hmm. but of course we're talking about outdoor events. So again, it's kind of a, a preview of coming attractions, if you will, in some respects. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that actually has already arrived is mm -hmm. the Lake Mead Dog Park. Yes. So if you could tell us a little bit about what it is, where it is, mm -hmm. and how people can take advantage of this new facility here. Sure. We have a new dog park at Lake Mead Park mm -hmm. and that is off of Main Street behind Farm Fresh and it is a two-sided dog park. It has a large dog side for dogs 30 pounds and up and a small dog side for dogs 29 pounds and under okay. and um, it's just a lot of space for dogs to run around mm -hmm. and it's a great place to take your dog and it's been open since November for okay. the public. Okay. But we'll have a grand opening May 3rd okay. from 10 to 12. Okay. And um, you, if you'd like to register for the dog park, yes. you can either come to our main office mm -hmm. off of 6th Street right. or you can go to the Lake Mead Ranger Station which is over by the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. There's a trailer and they have office hours Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Okay. And Monday is from 2 to 4, mm -hmm. Wednesday from 2 to 4, and Saturday from 11 to 12. Okay. You can go by there. And it's $10. All they need to bring are their shot records because mm -hmm. we need to make sure everything is safe for the other dogs. Right. Um, and they'll get you signed up, give you a little tag and a code, and you can get in there and start having a good time. Well, good. Now, you say $10. Is that an annual membership that you're it looking at? It is an annual membership. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. And is it per dog? So if you would have more than yes, one dog? Yes, it's would... per okay. dog. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, you said it's pretty easy to go and get signed up for that. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you get uh, code access to get into the facility yes. itself, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So that way we don't have um, dogs coming in that maybe don't have their shot records right. Right. up to date and things like that. So, so really you're looking out for the safety of the dog mm -hmm. and obviously the dog's owner with regard to knowing that the dog is sort of cleared, if you will, to be yes. around other dogs and there's no safety mm -hmm. concerns in that respect, yes. right? Yes. Yes. But once you have your code yes. and you have your tag, you can let your dog off the leash mm -hmm. and it's a great way for your dog to socialize. Right. and it's a great way for people to socialize Indeed. because you meet other people and um, we were hoping to build a little community out there for our dog Very park nice. owners. Now when is the dog park open? When is it accessible for people who have their membership? It's open during daylight hours. Okay. So anytime that our park is open, which is sunrise to sunset, right. and it's seven days a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course I guess you would just park in that parking lot that's kind of near the, the, the playground area. Yes. And then where is it situated on the facility there, itself from that lot? There is a trail that okay. you can enter behind the playground okay. at the borderline of the woods mm -hmm. there and mm -hmm. you can walk down it's a nice little trail they put in um, and then soon we'll have a paved area for parking very nice mm -hmm. okay well that really adds to the amenities you find out there you have mm -hmm. the playground area you have the skate park yes. you also have the tennis courts of course mm -hmm. that huge facility there mm -hmm. and now we have the dog park so again yes. we continue to expand on that site yes and we have shelters picnic That's shelters right for... it's a great place to have a picnic or a birthday party and things like that now if someone would like more information about the dog park and I know you noted about the ranger station hours there mm -hmm. and wanted to talk with someone who what's a good should they call you they can call okay. me yes and my phone number is five 514-7262 mm -hmm. okay. and if you have any questions about any outdoor programs at our parks give me a call and I'd be happy to answer them for Great. you. Okay mm -hmm. well let's talk about some of those programs because okay. I believe there are quite a few coming up this spring and we're already starting to look ahead to the summer because there's mm -hmm. some registration going on for summer camps and activities. Yes. So why don't you take us through the offerings that you have sure. and again focus on an outdoor perspective so a great chance to get out and enjoy the scenery and the sights and sounds of the city of Suffolk. Yes. So I'll let you take it away. Yes one of our big concerns and things that we really really want people to um, to be a part of is nature and conservation. Yes. So we're having a lot of programs for kids and adults that have to do with nature and conservation. Um, this Saturday we're actually having our first nature detective series right. which is going to be exciting and fun and I'll be there and we're going to teach the kids. It's going to be a tree scene investigator so they get to go out and make bark imprints and they're going to do a mystery of where the animals have all gone at Sleepy Hole Park for the winter Very nice. and we hope to make that a series throughout the other seasons right. and have a good group of nature detectives and then in February 
or in January, I'm sorry, that's January, February 22nd mm -hmm. at Lake at uh, Lone Star Park. There's going to be what we're calling a hoot nanny, and it's our owl program. Nice. And the Virginia Aquarium is going to bring a live owl out, Very and nice. we're going to do an owl, a program about the owls of Virginia. And then we're going to go outside and do owl calls, and that's going to be fun. And that's for everyone. Right. And it's from four to six p.m. Okay. on the twenty-second. And you can call and register. It's going to ask you about pre registration It's limited yeah. space. Okay. Just because okay. there's a live animal, we want yeah. to make sure it's. Not too many people. And then in March, we're going to be having an edible landscaping workshop at Bennett's Creek Park. Mm -hmm. So if you want your garden to be a part of the landscape in your right. front yard and have a very attractive looking edible <laughs> landscaping, you can come out and the master gardeners are going to be there from 10 to 11 okay. on March 29th. And they are going to uh, show everyone how they can do that. Now, is there pre-registration for that one um, as well? That one is actually uh, going to be outside, okay. and anyone can come okay. to that. Okay. So, um, And then coming up in February, we're having our summer programs, our summer camps. We right. always have these great summer camps, mm -hmm. and one of them is our outdoor adventure camp. Right. So, uh, And we call it OAK for short. Uh, and it's, a, it's six weeks, and each week is a different group of kids, mm -hmm. and we take them on field trips. We do a lot of nature things with them. It's going right. to be a lot of fun. Um, and the registration is normally later in the year. We're doing it earlier this year, so we want parents to know okay. it's going to be February 3rd this year, uh, 4 to 7 p.m. at Oakland Rec Center. Mm -hmm. So uh, just for parents that are normally registered later right. in the year, we want to make sure they know it's earlier this year. Now, what are the ages? Uh, do they do different <laughs> sessions for different ages? They split ages? it up. Yes. Okay. The first three weeks are for six to nine-year-olds. Mm -hmm. The second uh, three weeks are for 10 to 14 year olds. Okay. So we'll have a different set of programs okay. for each kit for each uh, age group. Now I, you noted that you know there's three weeks and then three of the two mm -hmm. uh, different age groups. Can you sign up for all three of the first? Say for example, your child is of age, or do you can you only uh, opportunity only open to one of the three? Weeks? You can sign up for more than one week, yes. but it's a limited space. Yes. Um, so it just depends on it's kind of a first come first serve okay. thing. So. Okay. Um, so if you would like your child to come for more than one week, you right. can pay for the you extra weeks, okay. but um, it's a limited space, so we can't guarantee you get more than one week. Now, would the topics be different from each week? Or are they Yes, okay, we're actually so. doing themes. Uh, so each week is a different biome. Perfect. So we'll have deciduous forests, wetlands, grasslands, you know, so each each week is going to be a different theme. Mm -hmm. And our field trips are going to be based off of those themes. Nice. And, the, and the different activities we do are also going to be based off those themes. So if you were to sign up for the three weeks and, and the mm -hmm. space, again, is available for mm -hmm. that opportunity, you'd actually kind of see something different. All, so yes. really there might be an incentive there. We're going to mix right. it up. This okay. is going to definitely be different each mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the hours that those that particular camp runs in each session? Those, um, those camps are going to be from 8 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. They could show up at 8 a.m. Right. So it'll probably be more like 9 to 2 p.m. Okay. Uh, we'll be doing the activities and doing things. So Now, yeah. is lunch provided or would you need to bring your no, own lunch? No, they need to bring their own lunch. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing. They need to bring sneakers, bug spray, <laughs> sunscreen. It's going right. to be summertime. Right. So yeah. uh, definitely bring those things and, and nice, cool clothes. And yeah. some days we may need swimsuits, yeah. too. Okay, so. well, that's something. <laughs> again, we're not thinking about that in January. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, the day we're taking today, but at the same time, again, something to look forward to when obviously the weather conditions yes. are a lot more uh, suitable for being outside mm -hmm. and enjoying the, uh, the scenery there. Now, you noted about, I want to go back for just a second, to the owl event. And that's yes. called, again, the, the Hoot Nanny. Hoot Nanny. <laughs> now, what, you, is it any age for that, both children that's and adults? all ages. All ages. Okay. We know kids, young kids, and adults are going right. to enjoy something like that. So that's for families. We just want it to be a family event. Got it. And anyone can come. And now again, you mentioned with that one, due to the fact there's going to be a live yes. animal there, you have to kind of limit the amount of people that can attend. Yes. So pre-registration, when does that, is that already underway? It's already right underway, okay. so they can call me um, anytime and let me know. We've already had some spots fill up, so, um, so call me as soon as you can okay. and, uh, and uh, we'll fill that one up soon, okay. I hope. Now, if somebody's watching this program, I know we mentioned it off the top, uh, would like more information about one of these programs or to register. Again, they should contact you, right? Yes, okay. contact me, or you can come to the front desk and talk to our front desk okay. person, and they will help you with it as well. Um, 
and if you need more information, you can also go online and we have a leisure guide on our website Very nice. that they can look at and okay. see the information on that as well. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I guess something to look forward to, you know, we're talking about uh, several programs in the context of this show that are mm -hmm. coming up, as you noted, in February, early spring, and then looking ahead to the summer. But again, you're always looking for opportunities to add to that kind of resume that the yeah. city has to offer mm -hmm. and that, that inventory there of opportunities for both young and old alike to get yes. out there and enjoy all the different parks and mm -hmm. facilities that the city of Suffolk has to offer. Yes. And I believe a lot of the things that you mentioned, they're not just at one place. No. Again, you're kind of moving them around. Have, so again, yeah. We have four regional parks right. all around the city. We also have a lot of city parks and we have a lot of locations that are great locations for outdoor activities. Right. Um, we'll be having more um, access points for kayaking ca and canoeing coming up. Right. A Sleepy Hole Park will be getting a pier and an access point for kayaking and canoeing. Um, so we, we hope people are going to be able to explore our waterway trails as Indeed. well soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Suzette, thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you for having me. Look forward to all these great opportunities. We'll thank definitely you. have to have you back because we've got to promote some other things throughout mm -hmm. the year. So be looking forward to that. And again, we'll have more on the scene when we return. Welcome back to On the Scene, joined now by Byron Lawrence, who's Program Coordinator with the 757 Protege Suffolk Mentoring Program. Byron, thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. You know, we're joining you, and, or actually you're joining us, in a really good time because January is National Mentoring Month. Right. Talk a little bit about what Suffolk Parks and Recreation and the mentoring program here uh, has been doing throughout the month to promote mentoring and honor those who are mentoring our young people here in the city of Suffolk. This January is National Men Mentor Month, mm -hmm. and what we have done, we had a banquet just last week, and we honored eight honorees, and we honored three organizations that participate in group mentoring. Right. Now, again, certainly, and also I believe there was a social media day, I believe, associated with National Mentoring Month, I guess, to kind of get the word out about encouraging people to be mentors and the impact that mentors have on their mentee, correct? Right. Yeah. Um, on that day, all you all we had to do was get on social media, sure. Facebook, texting, and just let someone know what someone meant to them right. and how they got them into the positions or the, where they are in life today. And of course, certainly the mentoring program here run through Parks and Recreation is very, very important and a lot of emphasis and put on it because again the, the, again, the impact that mentors can have on the lives of these mentees. If you could just talk about maybe some of the stories or some of the thoughts you have about the program and you know you don't have to name names specifically exactly. but the types of people that are involved and, the, and the, the things you're seeing coming out of the program. Well the Office on Youth established 757 Protege. Mm -hmm. It's a mentoring program where we're looking for caring and dedicated adults mm -hmm. who will reach youth by fostering hope and life skills in an individual. Right. Also our mission is to have provide volunteer mentoring for the ages of 8 and 17. Mm -hmm. Now again, y'all make the connection, so if someone, say for example, was interested in being a mentor. If, so, if someone wants to come in, all they yeah. have to do is just come right here at Suffolk Parks and Recreation or Administration Building. Yes, sir. And it's asked for me. Okay. I'm right here in the office on youth department. Okay. And again, is there, you know, sort of an application process or a background check that's done on the mentors? Yes, we have we have a referral form. Yes. And we also have a back um, a background check that we that goes through with um, our volunteer coordinator. Now, if you have a parent or a guardian of a young person out there that might be interested in being a mentee as part of, part of the program, is that something else they would reach out to you, or how is that connection made? That's also by referral as okay. well. Right. And what they do, that parent will fill it out, fill the form out, and it's short and brief. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is what they want us to do for that yes. child and what they want to get out of the program. Gotcha. And then again, y'all work to make the connection so that the mentor and the mentee relationship, you know, there's some, I guess, identifying factors to make the connection there, yes. correct? Right. Yes, yes. Also, with 757 um, seven Protege, mm -hmm. what we have done, being a mentor is very important. Yes. 757 will help you to make changes in a person's life by helping with their moral character, work ethic, life skills, social and emotional skills, as well as lifelong learning. And I have had an experience because I have been, I have a mentee, mm -hmm. and dealing with him, when I first met him, he was a very quiet guy. Um, he didn't really have a lot going on, let's say, socially. Right. So now, 
since we have had that relationship, yes. he's very positive in school. He's mm -hmm. doing the right things, and he's on the right path. Good deal. Now, how much time does a typical mentor spend with their mentee? I know it sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it can vary, but what do you look at? What is the investment of time in, on the mentor's part, typically? We're looking for just a one-year commitment. Mm -hmm. And within that one-year commitment, you build a relationship. Yep. And after that one-year commitment, you have the determination if you want to stay with that, um, that, per that individual right. or not. But in most cases, mm -hmm. most cases, they don't want to leave that person right. because they're making a, so much of a big impact on that person. Indeed. There's no, they don't want to leave them. Now, with the program, how is it set up? You know, certainly the mentor meets the mentee and you, you, you get the ball rolling there, but are there structured things where, say, everybody comes together or there are individual sessions or group sessions, you know, weekly, monthly? How does, that, how does the program work in that? We have a curriculum that we have established. Okay. And within that curriculum, it, get, it lays out what the mentor needs to do with that mentee right. from the first part of the relationship. Got it. And as relationship builds, builds, then they have that autonomy to either stay with the curriculum right. or they can veer off and do some things on their own. But long as they, long as him and me, that person, and the mentor get right. together and we meet on it, Good deal. we go with that. Now, what would you say to encourage someone out there that's considering being a mentor? Maybe they've, done, maybe they've been a mentor before or maybe they have it, but they want to make a difference in someone's life. What would you say to say, look, you need to come out, talk to us, let's see what we can do for you? Everyone has their own individual talent. Right. And being a mentor, that's your opportunity to be able to give that talent to someone. Mm -hmm. um, I was always told if you want to be a mentor, pick someone who doesn't look like you and who doesn't act like you. Right. And that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And then as you see that person grow, then that will give you some self-gratification self right. as well. Right. And I guess you, I'm sure there are a number of stories you could tell about the success this program has had. How long has it been in existence? It's been in existence for four years. Four years. Okay. Four years. How many, approximately how many mentors and mentees do we have in the program? Right now we, right now we have three. Okay. Three mentors mm -hmm. and we have three mentees. Okay. So obviously a lot of room for growth yes. if people were wanting yes. to take advantage of the opportunity. Yes. And I'm looking for people that would like to make a difference in someone's life, right. especially, especially the youth. Now, is there any training that you provide or any kind of upfront thing you help to get the mentor kind of so that they're understanding what the program's all about? I'm sure there's some meetings or things that take place. Yes. Every quarter, mm -hmm. we have a group session right. with the mentee and the mentor. Okay. And with those group sessions, I will bring someone in that would be that's trained in a particular field mm -hmm. to be able to talk about certain things that they would like to that we have going on. Sure. And I think the interesting thing that you brought up is that you know, you, you noted you were told that find someone who doesn't look like you or is not right. exactly like you because I guess really that's what in life and relationships are all about finding people that are different and interacting and making a difference because if it's someone who's just like you you don't want to make them just like, like you necessarily exactly. right exactly you know, kind of help them develop and grow the way they want to grow and you're just kind of providing the, the guidance and the maybe the leadership there right? yes okay. yes now how long have you been a mentor four years four years okay. four years have you found it to be pretty rewarding i love it i love it it has helped me personally yes. mm -hmm. um, it has done made great strides with me right personally just watching this young guy grow, mm -hmm. and from the first part of our first meeting right. to now, mm -hmm. it's been it's been very positive for me. Good deal. Very now, have positive. you been with him the whole time? For the four? whole the whole time. Okay. Because, like I said, we only have a one year That's commitment. That's right. That's right. And after. When my one year commitment was over, mm -hmm. there there's no way I could let him go. <laughs> like, there's nothing. And would he say the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> now, if Byron, if someone's watching this program and they'd like to get more information about the program, possibly how they can get involved, or if they want to maybe refer someone, how, who would they contact? Would it be you? They would be with me. Okay. They would just um, five one four. Four five zero six. Okay. That's my that's my office number. Right. Or they can just come right down here to the main office. Okay. And I will have all the information for them. Okay. And again, the main office we're referring to is the Suffolk Parks and Recreation Administration office, which is located on off of South Sixth Street, right? Yes. Right next door to East Suffolk Recreation. So. One thirty four South Sixth Street. Good deal. Yes, sir. Well, Byron, thank you for being with us. Thank you for talking about mentoring, and thank you for doing your part to help you know the youth in the city of Suffolk as far as with the mentoring program and providing the knowledge and the guidance that you do. So we appreciate that. Thank you, and I appreciate you having me. Okay. And that would do it for this edition of On the Scene. We'll see you again next time.